trying to read. I'll go check that in the hall. Hello, everyone. This is Jana Wolf and... Good evening, everybody. Great to see you. Michael Salmon, I'm the Sleeve Chef here. Great to see everybody. How are we doing tonight? Thank you for joining us and welcome to the Sleeve Chef. Um, my name is Jana Wolf. And I am the Director of Nutrition over at GBMC's Comprehensive Obesity Management Program. And um, this is Mike Salomon. Hi, everybody. We're going to be cooking something that's really delicious tonight. I'm very excited about it because it has one of my favorite sauces ever. Oh, yes. Yeah, we, we are super, super excited for this dish, guys. Uh, so that favorite sauce is going to be chimichurri sauce. Mm -hmm. It's light. It's fresh. It's simple to make. You can make it on the fly. It's going to stay for a while as well. You can keep it for three to four days. It's delicious. And what's interesting about it is that it's typically used in Latin America, South America, and Argentina on meat. Right. And we're going to do it on a lovely, beautiful piece of rockfish tonight. So I'm excited to see what it tastes like on fish. Exactly. And I know that a lot of our patients are trying to um, not get off of, but reduce a little bit more of their red meat. So um, this is a great way to do it. Yeah, absolutely, everybody. Rockfish, is it's it's delicious, it's healthy, uh, it's good for you. It's Available most of the uh, year. Absolutely, yep, absolutely. Available the majority of the year. Uh, there's plenty of uh, places you can purchase it where they'll be more than happy to break it down for you as mm -hmm. well. So you don't have to necessarily feel like you have to buy the whole fish. It'll be filleted. Uh, so really healthy, really good for you. Flaky. Yeah, flaky, exactly. <laughs> so our dish this evening, guys, we're gonna do a pan-seared rockfish we're going to serve that over some butternut squash chips and some sauteed spinach and garlic. And then we're going to top that with this fresh chimichurri. It's going to be light. It's going to be flavorful, protein packed, really good for you. We've got this nice sort of extended summer going on right now. So we figured we'd take, it we figured we'd take advantage of it. All right. So All without right. further ado, let's, uh, let's get started here. So we'll start with our rockfish. Just a couple, uh, couple tips here, guys. So first things first with your fish, you want to smell it. Before you even buy your fish, you want to ask them if you can smell it. So the key thing is okay. your fish should not smell like fish. It should smell like nothing. If it smells like fish, it's probably past its prime. Mm. So if you're buying the fish whole as well, you want to take a look at the eyes. If the eyes are clear, you want to take a look at the gills, make sure they're nice and red. Uh, a couple things too, when you're dealing with rockfish, you want to feel along the flesh of the fish for the skin, but for the uh, uh, pin bones that may be I'm sitting in there. I'm going to do it too, just yeah. so I'm learning as well. See, so you want to yeah. be really mindful to feel along that flesh just to make sure there's no pin bones hiding out in there. Uh, and then also, this is you can tell this has actually been really well cleaned because uh, A, there's no pin bones, and B, so the belly, so this is the top of the fish here. You've got the tail on this side, you've got the head on this side, and the belly would be right here. So you can see there's very, very little, see a little white piece there? That kind of going back, there's very, very little uh, of that white part, which is the belly of the fish. So we really don't have to do much in the way of actually cleaning this fish. Right. And I do want to say hello to Jess. Hi, Jess. And Chantrice. Thank Hi, you Chantrice. for joining us. Yeah, thank you for joining Ruby. you guys. All right. All right. So the first thing we're going to want to do for our fish here is we are going to want to simply take it and clean off some of this belly meat. So let's do a quick cut over. Now is that white part fat or just fat yep. shock? Exactly. So it's mostly okay. fat is what you're was is what it is. So it's really it is edible, but it's mm -hmm. just not gonna lend well to the final product. So we're just gonna simply remove it. And where did you get that? Since a lot of people ask me where the um, great uh, fishes fish that you can get, where did you get that? Uh, so I actually got this at Harris Teeter of all places. Nice. Yeah, they have a really, really good fish selection uh, fish selection. Okay. Uh, again, it's a uh, local Maryland rockfish, guys. Uh, striped bass, is, we'll see it by another name as well. Uh, so all we're going to do to clean this up, so this is uh, about a, uh, the fillet itself is going to be right over, just about 12 ounces. So what I'm going to do when you get that is you just simply take a look at your fillet and you can kind of portion it off here into thirds. So let's go straight down. There's our first third of the fish. And with fish, it could actually be about the size of a checkbook. I know I usually say a deck of cards, but fish is sometimes flatter than something like chicken or beef. Um, and if you look at the size of a checkbook, that's about three to four ounces. And um, fish is, I have to just say something about eating fish. It's recommended that you get two servings a week. And um, 
On top of that, it's also helpful for your brain function. Has really good omega-3 fatty acids. Yeah, um, don't don't. You, you may hear uh, one of the common things people say. I don't really want to eat fish. Uh, you know, I'm concerned about mercury. The, yeah, I'm concerned about mercury. Jan, do you want to contamination? Mercury. Yeah, do you want to touch on that a bit. I do. Um, so mercury and contamination are two of the biggest things that we see with fish. Um, I would recommend always going on to seafoodwatch.org. Um, I'm not going to go through every single type of fish that there is, but um, a lot, of, a little, some of them are higher in mer mercury. Like you see, some of the tunas are higher in mercury. Um, but things like this are fine. You always want to see um, fresh caught is always good, um, and they'll usually have a little sign right in the fish section um, of what the highest quality fish is. But seafoodwatch.org is a great website. Also, they have an app. So if you're in you know, the grocery store, you can always open the app if you're interested in a specific fish. We do have um, a question from Justin. Is rockfish flavorless like tilapia or more like a salmon and flavorful? It's a good question. That, question. Is, that is a great question. What was the name? Um, Justin. Justin, Justin, that's a great question, Van. Um, so rockfish, it, it's actually, I would say it's not quite as a, 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 it doesn't have that, it's not quite as delicate as a tilapia would be, but it's certainly mm -hmm. not as robust as you would get from a salmon. I would say if anything, it's more middle of the road in terms of flavor profile. Um, but again, that, the, the cooking method and how you prepare is really gonna impact. Right, that. okay. But great. it's by no means, I'd say it's like a step, step to the, the middle in terms of flavor profile for to, uh, compared to tilapia. And then I would almost say it's like meatier exactly. than yep. tilapia. Exactly, yep, a bit heartier. Hardier. Yep, it's a bit hardier, which is a, a really good point. So that uh, makes it a really good contender for grilling as well, which is actually why you don't you don't see a lot of grilled tilapia. Uh -huh. You'll see tilapia nutrition will be either poached because it's so delicate, mm -hmm. or it'll be uh, sautéed, uh, like we're going to do tonight. But you'll also see a lot of grilled rockfish because rockfish is more fleshier and it'll hold up better to that higher heat cooking. Yeah, great. And great question. Just want to give a shout out to Liana for joining us. Hi, hello. Liana. And hello, Tanya, as well. Hi, everybody. Thank you for tuning in. All right. So on the side there, guys, I was just simply uh, seasoning our rockfish fillets here. So you can see we've got three four-ounce fillets. Uh, we've got our uh, extra virgin olive oil, a little salt and pepper on both sides, nicely seasoned. So I'm going to sit this off to the side. Oh, that's beautiful. And then we're going to make our chimichurri next. So Great. this is super, super simple, guys. All we're going to do is we've got our little robo cube here. We've got our little robo cube here. Definitely recommend going out and picking one of these up. But we're gonna take some of our fresh Italian parsley. Uh, one of the things you can tell, you can smell it as well. Italian parsley. Mm. Yum. Yum. All right, so we don't need a lot here. I'm just gonna simply remove it. And guys, this is going to be a lot of fresh herbs and oil. This is not the same thing as pesto. Yes, not very, at very, all. very, very it's good a, point. Kind of a misconception. I saw it on the internet that a lot of people think that this is kind of a similar sauce. Not even close. Yep. So really, the the, the primary common uh, uh, what do you call it uh, affiliation between the two is that they are very they're both herb centric, right. um, but pesto. Uh, you're gonna have some more. You're gonna have some nuts in it uh, versus, and that not only that too, but pesto is gonna be more mild because basil or basil is a milder flavor profile than pesto is. Mm -hmm. And it typically doesn't have vinegar in it either. Right. And, exactly. Right. Exactly. So we're gonna so have. Let's our, see. We're doing red wine tonight. Yeah. Red so we're doing a little red wine vin here as well. Okay. We're gonna have a little red wine vin. See, he's so good. He doesn't even have to measure it. This good. is all about eyeing in this situation. Then we're gonna add our little extra virgin olive oil here as well, guys. This is just about two tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil I'm adding in. And then next up, we are gonna add some garlic, guys. So we went out, decided to go out and buy that whole clove garlic. Uh, I wanna show you how to break this down. It's a really simple process. I definitely recommend buying fresh whole garlic. Mm. Uh, so what we wanna do is we wanna take our garlic in our hand here we want to just simply, on our cutting board, roll it and crush it on our hand. Oh, wow. With our hand, like so. With the palm of our hand, just roll it over and crush it. Oh, well, that seems that will, so much easier than that, what I do. That will... <laughs> I usually just slice down the side. Yep. Okay. And then we'll start off by just pulling our cloves out, our whole cloves. Feel free to discard some of those smaller cloves. 
and then we'll discard the skin. Just as you're discarding things, um, Justin has a great other question. Would a miso ginger marinade work well with rockfish? We use it with salmon at the time. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, you've got, that's a great question, Justin. I wouldn't go any lighter than rockfish for that marinade, only because you've got a really bold flavor profile there with both the miso and the ginger. So rockfish will be a really good candidate for that. Great. All right, Thanks, so, so for our garlic, guys, we've got our whole garlic cloves out now. Now we're just going to simply take our knife, the back of the knife, crush the garlic like so, again using your palm, and then just simply remove that garlic skin, and voila, there you go. Really simple crushed Good. garlic. We're going to pop that in. All with your hands, that's it. Exactly. And then again, okay. so we're just going to take, take our knife, take the palm of our hand, of our opposite hand, just do a quick crush of that garlic like so and again we'll just go through here remove it from this remove the garlic skin pop it back into our roboku we'll do one more got to be mindful with raw garlic as it can overpower and thank you to nikki for joining us hi nikki hello welcome all righty all right there we are now if you do see those green little pieces popping out of the raw garlic yep is that an issue no, not usually. Okay. Yep, you just want to just you just want to cut it off and discard it. Okay. We're gonna add a little salt and pepper, guys, and then we're gonna add just a couple of crushed red pepper flakes as well for just a touch of heat. Okay. Again, you can add this at your discretion. That's what's fun about cooking, you know, about culinary, is that you're able to sort of play around with the recipe and figure out exactly how much of something or how much of another thing you like or don't like. Mm -hmm. And Tanya was just asking how much red wine and how much Italian parsley. Um, so we did using. about a half a cup of uh, fresh Italian parsley, and then I added uh, just about a tablespoon of red wine vinegar to start off with. Great. And give this guy a nice blend. So the key here, everybody, the key here is to make sure that our garlic gets finely chopped up. Mm -hmm. Really, 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 really critical. Because you don't want to bite into a, if you've ever bought, if you've ever bought, bit into a uh, raw clove of garlic, it's really astringent, it's not good. So we want to make will sure. And for the rest of the night. Yes, exactly. All right. All right, that looks great. And um, Terry, thank you for joining us. And Jess, you can find the written recipe um, to this. It's on. It's currently on the comp site, but we'll, we're going to post it again. Yep. We're going to post it again and upload it. So you will see that. So I'm gonna add a little bit more extra virgin olive oil and a little bit more vinegar. Guys, I definitely recommend doing it this way because keep in mind, you can always add. It's much more difficult to actually yes. subtract. So you and can you can always add more. along the way too. Exactly, yep. Um, and then Terry was just asking, and I know we did the fresh garlic, but can we do the minced garlic as well that's already oh, in yeah. the jar? Oh yeah, yep, absolutely. Okay, yep. and then what? Um, how much would you use then? Do you know off the top of your head? Uh, off the top of my head, I would say you would want to use, uh, honestly, maybe, like a maybe, a, yeah, maybe a tablespoon, okay. maybe half a tablespoon. That, that's really a matter of, uh, think about the amount of parsley you have versus the amount of garlic that you have. Because mm -hmm. that's really going to balance out that dish. So you're going to have, you want to have about, uh, about five ounces of parley, parsley to about a half an ounce of garlic in this okay. recipe. So five five to one. Five to one, exactly. Okay, good, good. And thank you, Carla and Melissa, for joining us. Welcome. And as you can and see Jessica. here, guys, I'm just adding a little bit. And we are just currently making the chimichurri sauce. Yep. Which is um, a South American sauce that we're gonna be putting on the rockfish. Exactly. And it already looks and smells really good. Oh, so yeah. I'm I'm ready to taste this already. Yeah, this is delicious. Light, simple. There we go. Okay. Now we're talking. Okay, that looks great. That smells fantastic. That's what we want. Okay. So see, see here guys, this is what we want. We want that sauce to have just a little bit of liquid in it. So you can really sort of set it across your fish. Okay, and that's going to be going on the fish itself. Yep. Itself. So it'll, exactly. it's going to have a very fresh, bright um, flavor to it. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. All right, guys. So next up is going to be our. We are going to do our butternut squash chips. So this is going to be fun. 
Okay, and Tanya's asking the name of the blender machine. Oh, uh, this is just a simple, so it's a Roboku. Uh, it's what they're commonly called, food chopper. Mm -hmm. um, is, you know, another, another term. It's just a basic, uh, it's a Cuisinart, little, little uh, four cup Cuisinart work bowl. Okay, great. And then um, Melissa says, chimichurri sauce on everything with yes. hearts in her yes. eyes. <laughs> love, love chimichurri. <laughs> yes. Really fresh, really great. All right, guys, so next up, we've got our butternut squash for our butternut squash chips. So what we'll do here is we'll first cut the top of our butternut squash off, and then we're gonna cut right at the bottom. So what we're gonna be working with is Beautiful. this round shape. Now that has a lot of antioxidants in it, vitamin A, beta carotene. You're gonna get a lot of benefits, health benefits from that. Also, we talk about how squash sometimes has a little bit higher carb in it, but that it's not a starch. Those, those starches that are within there, those really good carbohydrates that are in there are actually seen to be insulin regulating. Hmm. So they don't really shoot up your blood sugar as much as something like a potato. That's really interesting. Yeah. It's good fine. to know. Very good to know. All right, guys. So for these butternut squash chips, what we're going to do is we've got our squash, we've got it on a flat surface now. Mm -hmm. So now what we want to do is we just want to work our way down with our knife and we want to peel the squash. And I'm assuming for someone that's a little less professional with a knife, can we do a peeler? You can absolutely, that is a great question, Jana. You can absolutely do use a peeler, absolutely. Whatever is most comfortable and most safe for you. And I find that cutting a squash, a big squash like that, is kind of intimidating. Um, but if you have sharp knives, like actually sharpen your knives. Get one of those long knife sharpeners. It's very easy to do every yep. month. And it's gonna be much easier yep. for you. That's a great point. And yeah. the other point there too, guys, is you're much more likely to cut yourself with a dull knife mm. than you are with a sharp knife. With a dull knife, you're more likely to put pressure down and it's, the knife's not gonna be working for you. It it's really be working against you yeah. and it's gonna slip and you're gonna be putting more pressure to actually cut. Okay, good. Okay, so Jess and Melissa are having a fun conversation about how the sleeve chef is not gonna help the hunger, but it kind of will though, because it's really good food. Oh and yeah. It's stuff that's all bariatric friendly. Absolutely. So yes, Jess, you make a point, but yes. Um, and then um, <laughs> Melissa will eat her sugar-free jello while she watches. <laughs> so hey, real quick too on that point of like helping the hunger guys, Keep in mind, you know, we really stressed in a program about getting your protein in first. Mm -hmm. That's really a key thing here. That's yes. why we want to do really focus on preparing dishes that are really protein friendly and really protein rich. Yes. All right. So for our chips here, what we're going to do next is we're going to take our squash and we are just going to very simply go straight down and make this Beautiful. little guy. And if you don't own a mandolin yet, it's oh, yeah. Mandolins make thin slices of things, and um, you just rub the squash or, or the zucchini or whatever against the mandolin, and it's very easy. So you can make thin slices yeah. like this without so even So see cutting what we're it. looking for here, guys? We don't want to go paper thin. Mm -hmm. We want to go, it, it's, I'd say it's about an eighth of an inch. I don't have my ruler with me, unfortunately. I sit at home along with my pants. Uh, <laughs> No, seriously, guys. Chef these made are, a boo -boo. We, 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 somebody, somebody forgot his pants today, this guy, and I had to go out and purchase these beauties. Fun times. All right, so. So you can get pans at Rite Aid if you're in a pinch. We learned that today. All right, so what we want to do here for our butternut squash chips, guys, is we want to cut them nice and thin mm. so that, we'll, that way all we can do is just drop them on in and they'll fry up nicely. And again, keep in mind here, you're not really looking for, you don't want it to be super, super crisp. Having it, having it be uh, just a nice little bite, it's meant to really sort of uh, uh, offset, uh, provide some texture and a little bit of sweetness to your dish. Mm. And um, Melissa is actually on clears right now, so that's All pretty right. cool. That means that you're going to be getting for you, Melissa. That's exciting. soon. So good luck. Fantastic. Um, Justin's still at work, making him hungry, but... Then you can look forward to something when you get home. Absolutely. Thanks for watching us, Justin. Appreciate it. Yeah. And then, and Jess, um, for Mike, how much of a challenge is it being sleeved and being a chef? By the time I cook dinner for my family, I'm too full 
to eat from taste testing? Ah, great question. Uh, so it's actually a very natural uh, 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 thing. It's really been something I've been struggling with, you know, and, and uh, over my, uh, since my surgery is, is, is being able to uh, really be mindful about how much I'm consuming, mm -hmm. you know, and, yeah. and as it fills me up. Uh, but it's definitely a process, you know, and, and what works for me is just to, to have a little taste and then stop. Just a little bit. Not, 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 you know, not a big bite. Just enough. Just enough. So for our butternut squash here, guys, we're going to take them and we're just going to do a quick flip. So see how that's starting to brown on the outside there? That sugar starting to caramelize? That's what we're looking for. And I will mention that if you own an air fryer, you can certainly do this in the air fryer with minimal Absol oil. Absolutely. Yeah. That's a great point. And yep. I know that like half of you guys out there own an air fryer. So no excuses. <laughs> All right. Yeah, so as our butternut good. squash are frying up, guys, we're going to go ahead and grab some more of our garlic. And we're going to clean that garlic up for our spinach. Now, um, Justin, when you fry these chips, should you have them deep fried or with a slight bit of oil? Ooh. I'm going to answer Ooh. that as the dietitian. Take it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that I do believe that you should have a slight bit of oil at the bottom and you can still get a really good deep um, yep. uh, browning on them and a crisp. And then again, if you have the air fryer, that's great. You can even bake them if you want absolutely. to. That's, absolutely, that's a great point. Yeah. And keep in mind too, there we go. That's what we're looking for. You see this, guys? This is what we're looking for. See that color? That is what we're looking for. So we're going to flip it over at that point, get it nice. And brown on the other side as well. Team air fryer, Jess. <laughs> <laughs> and then Melissa says, I need one. And I need one too, because I really want to see how they work. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Okay. So we've got our butternut chips, butternut squash chips frying up. Uh, we've got our delicious rockfish hanging out over here. So next up is to move on to our spinach. Beautiful. So we've got our garlic. So this is sort of the fun thing about cooking, guys, is that you really, it's an orchestration, right? So you can see we've got our rockfish prepped, we've got our butternut squash chips cut and prepped, and we're cooking them up now as well. Now, I have to say something before we go to spinach. Spinach is one of these superfoods, okay? So it's actually, you retain most of the vitamins and minerals that you get from it from actually sauteing it, okay? And which we're gonna be doing. Also, by eating it raw, of course, is one of the best way to retain the vitamins and minerals. So if you do it in like a smoothie, let's say, um, you can always throw spinaches, spinach in your smoothie and you actually won't taste it. You just have to not look at the color. If you have, if you have an opaque cup, then that's better. Um, but also it has almost the highest amount of magnesium, vitamin K, vitamin A. Um, any vitamin or mineral that you can think of is probably in spinach. So I would definitely say go for it. Also, anyone dealing with any constipation, it has a lot of fiber. Um, so, hello. Um, I think we all deal with that. Let's be honest, guys. Come on, we're all friends here. It happens. <laughs> and just when you're on a high protein diet, it's more, it's bound to happen, um, especially if you're not getting enough enough fruits and veggies. So um, definitely go for as much spinach as you want. And when you saute it, you could take a whole box of it, and it'll kind of go down to like. Basically nothing. Absolutely, yeah. So you can, have a lot of, you can have a good amount of it and get all of the That benefits. is a great point. So one of the things too, guys, to help crisp up those chips is we want to be able to get a, uh, a little uh, paper towel here. And we'll just slide those on like so. And there we go. Because what that's going to that's gonna do is it's going to help absorb some of that uh, oil that's in the pan. Right. All right. So let these guys fry up. And then we'll get started on our rockfish and then our spinach will follow. All right, so for our pan here, guys, we've got a nice medium heat here for our rockfish. We're going to add just a touch of oil to our pan. Okay, and Melissa says that she loves the spinach with olive oil, garlic, Italian spices, and a bit of shallot. There you go. Shallot is I one like of it. my favorite love alliums. Love, love. One of my favorite alliums, too, Jana. <laughs> I could take, I could bust we that a little bit. We have so much in common. I know, I know. It's a, it's one of my culinary terms. Um, but shallots add a, a good amount of flavor. You could add shallots to anything. Could you add shallots to the chimichurri? You could. Or would that be Yeah, weird? you could. I would add a half a shallot to this. Okay. 
The okay. shallots, again, are just like garlic. They're very pungent. And they pack yes. a, a little bit of shallot. goes a long way. So for our spinach, for our garlic here, guys, we're just mincing up our uh, spinach. Mm. And then I'm going to go ahead and add our... Go ahead and add a rockfish next. And um, great suggestion from Justin. One of these days we should make a live show with an audience. Yeah. So Absolutely. our comp patients can actually taste some of these things. I know. That'd be fun. Yeah. And you are sauteing that on what heat? So that is on a medium heat. Okay. So uh, note, guys, we went skin side first yeah. into our pan. And we have some volunteers to taste test. Yes, fantastic. Yeah. We love it, guys. We love our taste testers. All right. So there we go. See how that skin's crisping up nicely there? Okay, so you did flip it over. Yep, so see that? So I went about a minute on one side. I'm going to add just a little bit more olive oil to our pan here. Mm -hmm. And then next up for our spinach, we're going to add a little bit of our minced garlic first. Okay, we're getting a lot of likes for the live show. All right, love it, guys. Um, Appreciate it. And then just keep the questions coming too, everybody. These are great, great questions. And then Jess asked an interesting question. I think there's a couple of answers to this. Um, I don't know what fish I like. What types of fish are the least fishy? Ooh, and I think that there's. I I think that there's a couple of things we can say about this because when you were in the beginning talking about how you really have to get good fish. You know, make sure that it's fresh. Fresh fish won't be fishy. Exactly. No matter what kind of fish it is. Exactly. That's a really, really important point to make, guys, is that with your, when you're thinking about fish, and you think about a fish being fishy, that's usually due to the quality of the fish itself, not necessarily the uh, uh, type of fish. Now. Certain fish will have a bit more of a hearty flavor, like salmon, uh, swordfish is a big one, mm -hmm. uh, monkfish is another one that comes to mind. The Dougal monkfish, guys, it's a really ugly looking fish, but it's delicious. Uh, catfish, that's another one that's gonna have that more robust sort of fishy flavor that people talk about. Yeah. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention with our spinach here, guys, is that we really wanna keep an eye on that garlic, because that garlic will burn. So if you burn your garlic, because it does happen, you just want to throw it out and start over. Now, Justin's asking us if we could do a steak dinner. Now, we, sure. we did do steak. We in, did. In the past. So that is on, um, that, that is something that you can rewatch. Um, and we can find it on the GBMC page. Absolutely. So guys, we're going to cook our rockfish here. We're going to cook our rockfish for about a minute and a half, two minutes on either side. So I've got my spinach here next. See how it's nice and wilted down. We've got our garlic in there as well. So you can see everything starting to come together here, guys. So we've got our rockfish sautéing. We've got our spinach sautéing. That's ready. We've got our butternut squash chips. Those are ready. We've got our chimichurri. That's ready. So one of the key things to talk about here when we think about preparing food, especially when you're cooking for friends and family or for a live cooking show with some wonderful people, is you can always, you've always got to be all about timing. It's all about thinking, okay, I've got to do, this is going to take this long, this is going to take this long, this is going to take mm -hmm. this long. So it's all about being prepared and it's all about making sure. And having everything out. Exactly. Ready to go. Exactly. It's something that's always helped me. This um, is looking really good here. And then Melissa said that she likes tuna, cod, flounder, and perch. Yum. Or the poor man's lobster, which is funny. That's fantastic. And um, Danny, uh, we we bought the fish, or Mike bought the fish at um, Harris Theater. I did, yep. But you can find rock, rock fish is readily available at a bunch of different locations, guys. All right, so we are ready to plate. Let's talk a little plate, Beautiful. shall we? So we've got our butternut squash chips. We're going to lay them on the bottom. 
I was curious what was going to go yes. first. Yes, we're going to learn butter and squash chips on the bottom. And we're really looking at basically building our plate here, right? So we've got our butter and squash chips first. We're going to take our spinach next. We'll get right in the middle of our spinach. And then after that, we're going to top that with our next butternut squash chip here as well. Oh. Then, the rock fish. See that color, guys? That's what you're looking for. See that nice Maillard reaction? That's that protein browning. Yeah. That's what you want. We're going to serve this skin side up. And again, we're going to go right on top. One of the things they teach you in culinary school when you're plating, height is your friend. So you want to add height to your plate. So, and we're going to finish this off with some fresh chimichurri. And uh, I think Jess is a little um, kitchen challenge. She said he cooked all of this in the time it took me to chop a zucchini. <laughs> it's definitely a learning process, you know? I mean, this is, there we go. We're gonna do a little fresh chimichurri on top of our and rock fish here, guys. Jess, if you're looking for the low acidity, all of the fish is, all of the fish is low acidity. And then, um, so is that a minute on each side for the rock fish? Oh, great question. So I did uh, about two, yeah, two, like a two and a half more. minutes on each side uh, for the rockfish guys. Here we are. So this is what our finished product's going to look like. So we've got yeah. our rockfish. Uh, so we've got our butternut squash chip. We've got our spinach and garlic, and then we've got our butternut squash chip on top, followed by our rockfish, and then finally some of that fresh chibi churro. Gorgeous. And this dish is chock full of vitamins and minerals. It's chock full of protein, fiber, all of the things that you need for a perfect meal for bariatrics. So this is something that you can absolutely eat once you're on the regular diet, um, you know, one month in, you can test it out, see how it goes. Yep. Um, Fish, I know, I know by, for myself personally, it's much easier for me to process and digest fish mm. than it is meat. It's much so lighter. I, exactly, yeah. much, much, specifically uh, uh, whole muscle meat, so steaks, uh, and the like, right? Yeah. Uh, versus like ground beef. That's why mm -hmm. I typically go for lean ground beef versus like a whole muscle ste right. Like a steak. Right. Okay, great. Yeah. So let's see. Um, we have one last comment that is my favorite, and it's just a one big nom. <laughs> nom, nom. So thank you all yes, guys, for joining thank you, us tonight. Thank you very much for joining us this evening, everybody. Once again, we prepared the pan seared rockfish. Uh, we served that over some uh, butternut squash chips with some sauteed spinach and garlic, and then topped it with some fresh chibi churri. Uh, as always, Jan and I are so happy that you tuned in this yes. evening. We had a great time. Thank you so much once again, everybody. And Take, thank you to ABC Two yes, Studios thank you to for ABC their beautiful Studios. new yes. kitchen set. Um, and thank you for tuning in. We really appreciate it. Yeah, really appreciate it, everybody. Thanks again. Have a great rest of the evening. Take care. Okay, bye, guys.